this is an avalanche of human suffering that's 100% man-made. It is the, the worst humanitarian catastrophe I've experienced in my lifetime and in my growingly long career in humanitarian medicine. And it's burning through the hearts of every single humanitarian that I know. You know, I'm going to paint a picture for you of the degree of suffering that we're seeing. People keep asking me about medical aid and hospitals and the situation of the hospitals. The entire hospital healthcare system collapsed almost a week ago. It was announced on TV for the whole world to see. And in that week, there has been indiscriminate bombardment. And I, I don't even know if indiscriminate is the right term because it's targeting healthcare facilities, ambulances, churches, mosques, schools, refugee camps, densely populated refugee camps, wiping out entire families in a second, entire multi-generational extended families in a second. There are almost 1,000 families in the Gaza Strip who have had at least two members of their family, at least two members killed in the last three weeks. There are almost 4,000 children who have been killed and identified, excluding almost a thousand children whose bodies are still trapped under the rubble. Some of them may be alive for a long period before they ultimately die under the rubble. And I'm sorry if there are any young you know, children watching this, perhaps this is a, a good time to ask them to leave the room, but I think it's important that I paint a picture, particularly when I'm following a news narrative that almost dismisses this avalanche of, of suffering that that is, unprecedented in modern times. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an acronym in the, in the Gaza Strip right now. You know, I, I'm a pediatric intensive care doctor. I see a lot of suffering in my career. There's an acronym that is unique to the Gaza Strip and it's called, it's WCNSF, wounded child, no surviving family. Children, and it is used not infrequently in the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. It was coined in the last three, three weeks. One physician told me two days ago that, or a few days ago, that a little uh, girl came in wounded and she had a piece of paper in her pocket that she handed to him. He sent me a picture of the piece of paper. It had 27 names on it. And she said, these are the members of my family that were with me in my home. Please look for them. Please look for them under the rubble. Don't look for this one. And she points to the name of her sister. I know she's already dead. This is a 10 year old little girl. Wounded child, no surviving family should not exist as an acronym. And to, to follow President Biden as he continues to justify and to warmonger, mm -hmm. all I can say is this has to stop. It's a collective stain on our humanity. It's a, a, a stain on our mm -hmm. collective humanity. Tony, and let me ask you, I, you paint such a, a vivid and horrific picture. Um, you really do. And I, and I understand that these are your friends and who you've worked with and, and how difficult that must be. You're not alone. I, I, I've been hearing today from reading testimony today from Philip Lazzarini, who's the Commissioner General of UNRWA. He's been speaking to the UN Security Council. He said this, the sanitary conditions are appalling. People live on very little bread and whatever is left of some water. 70 of their staff members have been killed and they are looking after 670,000 people in their refugee centers. Is there any sign from what you're hearing that of a humanitarian pause or pauses that could be negotiated? I'm not a politician, but the word pause to me makes no sense. You know, you pause to, to, to nourish and, and, and hydrate a population before you kill them. It just doesn't make any sense for me. You, you stop the bombardment. That is, what, that is what the entire global community should be pushing for and should be uh, insisting on. You, you, you know, and, and I think uh, in, in leading up to my introduction, I think you interviewed somebody who said something very similar, a, a, a Gazan who said something very similar. You know, the priority is not giving us aid. You need to stop the indiscriminate bombardment. So I think, yes, what is needed is a humanitarian truce or a ceasefire, global intervention, things that were voted for by the overwhelming majority of countries on this planet a few days ago in the General Assembly of the United Nations, yet they're not adhered to and are, are completely disregarded by the powers that be. Two powers to make, to be specific.